Hi, I'm Phil Cook, and today's episode is really for pastors and church leaders. Now, anybody can listen to it, and I'm thrilled that you do, but I have a question specifically for pastors, executive pastors, worship leaders, communications directors, church leaders. And that question is, do you really know the unique mission of your church? Today, I'm going to give you an interesting story about how a church in San Jose, California discovered theirs and what you could do to discover yours. Hi, welcome to the podcast. I'm Phil Cook. And, uh, you know, one of the frustrating things I see among churches out there is they don't seem to understand their unique vision and mission. Now, sometimes that comes top down from the pastor because that pastor's calling is unique. That pastor's vision hopefully is unique. And, and he gives that you know, shapes that church's personality and outreach around that. But very often it also comes bubbling up from the bottom. It comes from the kind of people you have in your church. For instance, in Hollywood, we have different churches that are really focused in different things. For instance, we have one church here in Hollywood that was founded by two dancers. They're professional dancers in the entertainment industry. They just got saved. They had a passion to <clears throat> passion to follow God. Uh, they felt God leading them to launch a church. They went to Bible school and they got you know qualified. They launched a church that particularly appeals to people in the entertainment industry, particularly dancers, which is kind of fascinating to me because they really understand. And every outreach they do, every vision of that church, every ministry that they do is really focused around that area of expertise that that church has. <clears throat> and I could name churches, other kinds of churches that do that, that I think are very interesting. I know there's a cowboy church in Dallas that really tries to reach out to ranchers and cowboys and people that get that whole world, understand it. That's the language they speak. And so they do outreaches and make an impact based on that. That background. Now, I've got a friend named Ken Foreman. He's a pastor of Cathedral of Faith Church in San Jose. I've known Ken since college. He's a great guy, and, and we've been friends for a very, very long time. And he did something a few years ago that I thought was absolutely fascinating. He, um, he was really struggling. Now, he's got a pretty big church, and uh, it's, he's got a few thousand members right in the heart of Silicon Valley. I mean, talk about a place where you could make an impact for the gospel. And he really felt a burden about that. It dawned on him one day that he really didn't know what his congregation did for a living. Didn't really, didn't, never given it much thought. I mean, he knew some people, obviously, but he, he wondered, what, uh, if I did a survey, what could we find out about our church members? So he did a survey, and to his shock, he found out he had a ton of dentists in the church. I mean, this is a few thousand members, so... It's not unusual, but he found out he had probably more, this, this incredible concentration of dentists. I think he had like 19 dentists in the church. So he thought, man, why am I not using that in some, some way? So he called all the dentists up, invited them over to his house one night and said, guys, what can we do here? What could we do that would literally bring smiles to people's faces? What kind of ministry outreach could a group of dentists do? Now, out of that, out of that survey, out of asking that simple question, he began what now has become the largest free dental clinic in the entire San Francisco Bay Area. I mean, they've been, they, they've been in USA Today, they've been in magazines and periodicals and on the news all over the country. Uh, a couple years ago, maybe three years ago, I guess, um, John Bach, who founded Grace Hill Media, called me up and said the USA, to, uh, USA Network, TV Network, wants to do a story on this. So we grabbed Kurt Warner, the, the NFL football legend, Flew them up there, and we took our cameras, and we spent a couple days filming their dental clinic, interviewing the dentist, interviewing some of their patients. And let me tell you, this is serious, high-level stuff. They're not just cleaning teeth. They're doing implants, full dental implants, and they're helping you know, poor folks, they're helping drug addicts, they're helping people that have been on the street who are homeless. Because, you know, if you've been a drug addict or an alcoholic for years and years, your dental health is not very good. And so they go in there and do serious dental work and have transformed the lives of people up there and given people a new confidence and a new hope. One of the things we we learned from talking to some of their, their patients were that was that, you know, I never had, I was homeless because I didn't have the confidence to go apply for a job. My teeth were in horrible shape. I was missing half of them. I looked terrible. I'd, I'd been an addict for a long time. And even after I got cleaned up on drugs, I looked so horrible. I, I just, I was embarrassed to go for a job interview. They went into the free dental clinic, got an entirely new set of teeth. Now they look like a million bucks and they're going out and doing job interviews and working and their success story has been remarkable. One church that I know that's right adjacent to a university campus. And so as a result, they have a lot of college professors that go to their church. And yet the big outreach they do every year is building houses in Guatemala. 
Now, these teachers are terrible builders. They don't know anything about building houses. They go down there, in fact, I feel sorry for the people that have to live in these houses that they build because they're terrible houses. However, if that church would do an educational outreach in, in an urban part of their city, they'd be amazing. They'd be ama people would notice. It would put that church on the map. It would make a huge impact among the people there in that city. If they would look for educationally disadvantaged people or areas and go in and get their team together, all these teachers together, what could they accomplish in that focus? So I'm, all I'm saying on this podcast episode today, it's going to be short. All I'm saying is, I just think you should stop, think about the talent in your church and really start using that. And truth, truthfully, this is a word for CEOs. It's a word for nonprofit leaders. It's a word for ministry leaders. Anybody that's leading an organization, it's just amazing when you start thinking about the passions that your people have. And say, and say you're a business and you want to do a, some kind of a social outreach, some kind of a nonprofit outreach to help people in your community. Even if you're a for-profit business and you want to offer kind of a charitable work, what are the people in your on your team brilliant at doing? What do they have a passion about? Maybe maybe it's building houses. If it is, great. I, I, have, I have a friend in Hollywood who's a film producer. And he tells me, my church wants me to go to Mexico and build houses. He said, I don't know anything about building houses. Building houses. He said, I could... I can produce $200 million movies. I'm good at that, but I have no idea how to build a house. He said, I wish my church could channel my energy into and my expertise into something that would really help people. Now, obviously, most people in need can't produce $200 million movies, but think of the, the financial expertise he has after all that experience. Think of the leadership expertise he has after all that experience. Think of all the experience he's had overcoming obstacles to make those films happen. What could he teach people who are in need, who are looking for a job? I'm telling you, if you just think about it, it's really quite remarkable. In fact, one of the keynotes to our nonprofit, the Influence Lab, uh, is that we teach and train Christians internationally to use the media to share the gospel. And one of our most unique trips was to Cairo. And we worked with an organization there that produces 80 hours a month of, of satellite television programming, specifically for Muslim audiences. And um, we wanted to go teach their trade. They, they called us and said, look, could you bring a screenwriter? Could you bring a director of photography? Could you bring a social media expert? Could you bring an acting teacher? So we got a team of Christians in Hollywood here. We went to the Middle East and we spent two weeks training their team. And so it was all about finding experts that could go in and really help people take their ministry and their organization to the next level. So all I'm saying is pastors, church leaders, think about it. Do the survey. Ask around. Find out if you have a concentration. I have one church, I don't want to keep railing about this, but one church I met, I think it was in Vancouver a number of years ago, they discovered they had a whole boatload of hairstylists in their church. They had barbers and hairstylists and designers in their church. So they started a ministry to homeless women to once a month they go in and do a makeover. And it's so interesting because they, they told me, you never know. Uh, he, they said, you can't imagine what it means to a homeless woman to have a makeover. Once a month to go in and completely do it. She, he, they said it builds her confidence. It just changes their attitude about things. The, you know, they may have given up hope for their future, but you give them a makeover and everything changes. And it's a vital ministry and they share the gospel as, as a part of what they do. What is it in your church? You may have a lot of sports people in your church. You may have a lot of business leaders in your church. Whatever it is, all I'm encouraging you to do is think in terms of how I could mobilize those people to make a huge difference in outreach. And let me tell you, that could create the kind of vision that would help identify your church, put it on the radar, get it known in your community, and help you grow. It's fairly simple when you think about it. Ken Foreman was the first person that I knew that really started thinking in that way. And I'll tell you, it's reaped a huge harvest for him. And the impact it's made in the San Francisco Bay Area is really enormous. So think about it. Think about it. How could you impact your church, your community, your city by figuring out what talent, what expertise, what passion is among the members of your church and go for there. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. This is fun to share stuff like this that I see when I'm traveling out there, consulting and working with our team at Cook Media Group. And I would encourage you again, maximize your influence, my book. I'd encourage you to get it because a lot of these tips, a lot of these ideas and things are in this book. If you're a leader, pastor, influencer, nonprofit leader, ministry leader, you need this on your desk because it'll answer a lot of your questions about how to share your story in today's digital 
world. Share this with pastors that you know, this episode in particular, because I want more pastors to understand the power of figuring out and mobilizing the talent and the experience that's in their congregation to go out and change their community. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next episode.